everyone and welcome to my new dory paint video and today's makeover i was going to make already probably for two years no okay for a year and a half maybe because every time when i'm planning my dolls for the next couple of weeks i'm only thinking oh yeah and i should make also the pinup doll finally but then they're coming some big doll hat, they're coming 17 inch monster high dolls they're coming some ideas from the comments and there is always something, and the idea of making a pin-up doll is still waiting and waiting and waiting. So let's today take this Frankenstein doll and let's turn her into one of these dolls from these beautiful and sexy posters of the 40s and yeah, beginning of the 50s as well. And I think that she will fit this style just perfectly because of her lips, because of her cheekbones, her nose. Yeah, she's actually such a mini Marilyn Monroe doll. So I think she will look absolutely beautiful in the end of this video. And the sketches for her clothes, for her outfit, are already redirected to my mom because she's helping me really a lot lately with the clothes for such a standard size Monster High dolls. All the bigger ones and the special projects are on me, but the standard size Monster High dolls right now is all on my mom. I'm preparing the sketches, I'm giving the ideas, we're discussing it, we're watching pictures and then she's sending me pictures of the end result and we're discussing it again, so something like this is going on so she's already busy, I hope, I hope, <laughs> with the outfit for this doll and I should also start working on her face, so let's go! So let's first, like always, prepare this doll for customizing I need to remove her old clothes and the accessories, of course, and then I cut her hair very short. To take her head off, I use my hair dryer. It works exactly the same like cooking water that is normally used for this purpose by other doll artists, but I personally prefer hot air than hot water, just because it's easier, faster, it's safer, because you cannot really burn yourself. And like this, I also have no water in my studio, next to the dry pastels, paper, fabric and all other stuff. But you can use water as well. The both techniques also melt the nasty sticky glue inside of her head and I can pull the rest of her hair easily off with the tweezers. And the next step of my repaint is removing her old face with 100% pure acetone. I also prepare her body already now by removing the glossy top with nail buffers and then I spray both the head and the body with three layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant. Now I'm going to change her body color from green into something more human-like. And for this I will use a color wheel like always and the color theory, of course. Her green body color lies somewhere here on the wheel. So to neutralize it I will need to take the opposite color from the red sector of the wheel. And then I will seal the face to let the green and the red colors mix together. Then I apply still a layer of light beige pastels to complete the color changing. And now let's sketch her face and for this we will need a reference picture of a real pin-up girl. And this is actually not Marilyn Monroe like we all think immediately. It was another model, but of course Marilyn was so iconic that all the pin-up artists made all their girls looking like her. So let's probably close it up a little bit and check the main features of the face, what we're gonna draw today. 
Her eyes are very big, wide open and very surprised and we can see the irises completely, the complete circle. They're not hidden under the eyelids. Because of the surprised face expression, her eyebrows are also quite high and seriously arched. And she also has very dark eyebrows, even though her hair is dyed blonde. And the lips are some sort of duck face from the 40s. So, that's what we're going to draw today using my Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils. The eyebrows look like always quite scary in the beginning, but it's gonna be okay in the end, after I shape them with an eraser. Now it's contouring time and if we'll look at our reference picture again, we will see that her cheekbones are seriously dark to show that her mouth is half open and to make her face visually a little bit longer. So let's do the same. And then I also add red blush to her cheeks. And then I take my pencils again and I start coloring her eyes. And while I'm drawing, I want to try something new. My channel is growing all the time, and this is of course very good. I'm very, very, very much happy that hundreds of new doll lovers join us every week. But there is a minus point as well. It became really difficult for me to read all the comments. And if reading still goes more or less good, because it's important for me to know your opinion, what you like more, and what is less interesting for you, but unfortunately, I cannot reply all the comments anymore like I did it before. So I have decided to choose a couple of recent comments, uh, the most interesting ones or the most frequently asked ones, 
and reply them in my videos. What do you think? I think it can be quite a good idea. Let's try. And if you like this format of communication, please let me know in the comments under this video and then I will do it every time. Yeah, let's go. And the first comment comes from Inwix, who asks where I get the doll hair. It's quite a popular question, so I think there is a reason to answer it like this in public for everyone. Most of the hair I buy from AliExpress. They have lots of wafts there, straight, curled, all colors. And loose hair, not in wafts for rerouting doll hats, I buy from retro doll swap stores, mainly from the UK. And by the way, I would really like to try making wigs from natural alpaca hair. So maybe some of you can recommend me a good online store with alpaca hair or other wool hair, natural materials that ship worldwide or maybe better even the one here in Europe. So write at least in the comment under this video if you know one. And the next question is from Kim Ismay. Sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. And Kim asks how I get my pencil so sharp. I always use a knife and never a pencil sharpener for my pencils. With a knife I can make them as sharp as I want and even without cutting the wood off. Then I can use my pencils much longer. And they are quite expensive, so it's very welcome every time. And Stormy Dark Lord, with his super cute profile picture, asks why I use pure acetone without gloves when my nails are painted. The secret is in using the gel nail polish. Regular nail polish survives just a couple of hours of my nails, because I'm always sanding something, cleaning with acetone, sewing and doing hundreds of other things with my hands. So I've bought my own UV and LED lamp already a very long time ago to be able to cover my own nails with gel polish whenever I need it. And let's take probably the last question for today. It comes from Beta Mosquito, who next to her very sweet and nice words, thank you so much, also asks about the best way to send me fan art. The easiest way is probably to tag me on Instagram or to use a special hashtag PopoNatalieArt. Then I will for sure see it and react. So I'm waiting for your fan arts, guys, I really love it. And meanwhile, I keep working on my doll. With a very sharp dark brown pencil, I add hairs to her eyebrows, and then with red pencil, I draw her bold lips. I add dark pastels to the outer corners of her eyes to give her pretty eye makeup. And then with a very light pencil, I draw the highlights.
With a very sharp black pencil, I draw the bottom eyelashes and the eyeliner. And I think I still want to add a beauty spot on her face, it will match the look. With white acrylic paint, I add the brightest highlights to her eyes. I always seal her face with at least two and better even three layers of the sealant before doing it. And then I can remove the paint with q-tips if I make a mistake without making any damage to her eyes. And now let's blush her body using the same color pastels like I use for her face. Sometimes I do the face and the body blushing at the same time, and sometimes I work on the body in the end. It doesn't really matter, I just must be sure that I use the same colors in the same order. But even if I forget it, I can always check my own filmed materials to see how I've blushed the face. And then I make a wig for her that will look like dyed blonde hair from the 40s and 50s. So now I need just to attach the lashes, to put glossy varnish to her eyes and lips, and to sign my doll. And now let's check out her new outfit. She gets high waist short pants decorated with tiny red buttons, a super cute teeny tiny short. and a pair of handmade leather sandals. And here's our pin-up star! I think I'll call her Marilyn anyway, even though I wasn't really planning to make exactly in Monroe though. But the same like the original pin-up artist from the past, I just couldn't get rid of the influence of the most iconic woman of all the times, or at least of the 20th century for sure. And I also think she looks pretty much like the original reference picture by Jill Alger that you've seen in the beginning of this video. 
So, I'm completely, absolutely satisfied by the result of my work this week and I really hope you have also enjoyed this work in progress video and the end result of it. And if so, please support my doll with your likes. And also check if you have already subscribed my channel and joined our doll lovers community here. And also hit the notification bell if you want to be first when my videos come out every week Friday. And I will see you already very soon in my new videos. Bye!